your joy when the morning comes your hope keeps me looking up you are enough your peace the eye of every storm your shame when my heart is warm Everything is grace. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Chapel North Worship. We're glad you decided to join us on this holy day, on this holy night in your time for worship. We are reminded of his love that is reckless, that is pursuing us at a constant, this crazy love that we get to celebrate in Advent season. So welcome to this time of worship. As we begin, would you take this time to quiet your hearts and remember what he has done for you. Remember what it is that we celebrate as we sing together, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the tears Oh, felt its worth. 
Christ was born On that On that most holy night, love came down, represented as man, pure love from God, all for us, all to bring him back to the Father. For I spoke a word, you were singing all the You have been so, so good. took a breath, you breathed your life in me, you have been so, so kind to me.
pray together. God, we thank you so much that you would come to dwell amongst us, that you would send love in flesh and blood, that you would redeem your people. We remember on this most holy night what we get to celebrate on Christmas as we look forward to that day. You give us love, joy, peace, light, hope, all from Jesus. We worship in his name this day, and we thank you for his sacrifice. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello again, it's so great to be with you again. I'm Pastor Wood, if we haven't met yet in person. And it is a joy to be together worshiping our Lord during this, the second week in Advent. Uh, we are in the middle of a sermon series throughout Advent where we're looking at things that basically they act like the Grinch. That's kind of the illustration that we're using. Um, so instead of the Grinch that stole Christmas, we're looking at, at things that sneak in very insidiously into our lives. Last week, uh, we, we heard about and looked at uh, the grief that steals away our Christmas joy. And we talked about how um, the Christ child in the manger heals our brokenness and heals our broken hearts and heals our grief because him in the manger also means him on the cross and also means him resurrected again on Easter. And his promise that we shall all be raised as him gives us hope in the midst of our grief. Um, today we're looking at materialism, the materialism that stole Christmas. And so uh, here is our scripture lesson for today. It's from Luke chapter 12 starting at verse 13, going all the way through verse 21. So Luke 12, 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, that's Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I'll do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, who shall they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. We pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to be together in your word. We thank you for the opportunity to be together in the name of Jesus. And we ask you that you would allow us to learn at his feet. That wherever we are, as we study his word together, that wherever we are in our faith walk, uh, that we would learn from Jesus as we hear him speak to us during this Advent season. Lord Jesus, teach us by your Spirit that we would obey you and follow you all the days of our life. Amen. So Jesus 
Um, he encounters a guy who is like totally off topic. So Luke chapter 12, if you read just the headings in here, uh, Jesus teaches about the Pharisees and he teaches about not being afraid in life because nothing on this earth can steal away your soul and, and God himself is the only one who can do that and God chooses to not to. And then he says, don't be afraid about acknowledging me before mankind because if you follow me, you're gonna be persecuted and you're going to be put on trial before people. And don't be afraid because my Holy Spirit will come to you and he will rescue you and he will give you exactly the words that you need in order to speak. And then some guy stands up and says, hey, teacher, my brother and I are having this argument about our inheritance. And Jesus' first answer to him is, first of all, like, why are you coming to me with this? Like, have you not heard anything I said about how God provides for us and how God protects us? Why are you coming to me with this? Who made me your judge, your arbiter between the two of you on this particular issue and then he says, be on your guard against all covetousness. Covetousness, that's a word we use all the time, right? Um, be on your guard against wanting too many things. Be on your guard against where your heart might go and where your mind might go and where your eyes might go as you walk through the world so that material things don't become your focus. Why would Jesus say this to us? And why would we be looking at this during this time of year as we make our way toward uh, the Christmas tree, toward the manger? Why? Why would he say that? I mean, isn't it at least a little bit true that covetousness makes the world go round, that that's what makes the economy good is that we want the new thing, we want the new phone, we want the new car, we want the new clothes. Jesus would say there's, there's really nothing wrong with that level of wanting something, right? That Jesus would say there is, there's nothing wrong with the idea that you have been Christmas shopping already, that Black Friday happened and you got up early and you went and you got all the deals, right? There's nothing on the surface wrong with that. So why would he say be on guard against that? And here's why. Jesus shows us that covetousness sets our focus on the wrong things. You see, Jesus um, he goes beyond the surface level here and he connects our eyes to our minds so that what we're looking at what we're seeking after kind of takes over our thought process. And then he connects our minds to our hearts. And he says that that, that which we dwell on, that which we um, are chasing after, that which we kind of plan our lives around will eventually be that thing that we love. And then he makes the connection between your heart and your soul. And he says, wherever your heart is, wherever it lives, that's where your soul lives. And so it's a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty easy process to get your eyes looking in the wrong place, to be thinking about the wrong things, to then be desiring with your heart the wrong things, and then find your soul in a place where it doesn't need to be. And Jesus gives us this reminder. He says, one's life does not consist in the abundance of his or her possessions. That is not the root of your life. That is not where you get your identity your security and your meaning is in the wealth of your possessions. Jesus then gives us a parable. Um, the title, it doesn't really, uh, well, it's not very nice. Right? It's the rich fool. The rich fool. And so um, remember uh, a number of weeks ago uh, when we were together, I believe I was even the preacher that day, um, we saw a rich young man come before Jesus, and that was a real live guy with a real live question. This rich young fool is a character that Jesus made up on the spot in order to teach a lesson. So this is a parable. Um, this isn't a real guy. This is somebody that Jesus made up on the spot to be able to teach a lesson. Jesus says, okay, there's a guy who has a bunch of land, and his land is super, super fertile. He has more than he could ever use. 
Now, what's interesting about this is that um, in Scripture there are commands that are given to God's people with what to do with all of that that you can't use. Right? We're supposed to find our security in the Lord, and so the Lord says to his people, look, when you have crops, do not cut all the way to the edge of your fields. Do not cut all the way to the edge of your corners. Leave those standing so that those who don't have enough can come in and they can receive that for free because maybe their crops had a bad year and maybe there was some kind of infection in the crop and maybe it just wasn't fertile and maybe they didn't get an in in time or maybe it didn't rain enough by them and they're able to come and get what you need. Get what you have and what you don't need um, so that would be their daily bread and that's God's way of providing for his People. Now, this guy, he apparently is only thinking of himself. And you can see his eyes focused on the wrong thing. You can see that he is putting his identity and his security and his meaning into the fact that he has a bunch of crops. And so he comes up with the solution, right? This is a funny, funny problem to have. My barns aren't big enough. They're already full. My bank account can't possibly hold any more money. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest it everywhere else that I possibly can until it stretches out as far as I can possibly get it. Right? And I'm going to spend the money it takes to double the size of my barns or triple the size of my barns or uh, diversify my investments even more right? so that I can keep making more. And then I'm going to stack it all up and I'm just going to look at it and I'm going to speak to myself and I'm going to talk to the deepest, darkest part of my soul and say, self, you're doing pretty good. Soul, you're doing awesome. You have all of this stuff. You don't need anything else. You don't need anybody else. You just simply relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, on the surface, that actually sounds kind of cool, right? Because in our daily lives, often we find ourselves rushing around and trying to get enough and trying to feel like we have enough. And that's the problem with covetousness. The opposite of covetousness is contentment. Right? See, covetousness is always concerned about me and it's always concerned about what I don't have yet. Rather than looking at what I do have and how richly blessed I am so that I can then bless the life of other people. Jesus says that um, just after this man is like sitting back in his easy chair, cracking a cold one, staring at his big barns full of grain, um, that God himself shows up. And God isn't very happy. And he says, um, right now, I need your soul. Like right now, your soul is going to be demanded from you. That's the one thing that I need from you. He's saying that right now, you're dead. Right now, you're dying. I am taking your life away from you. And everything that you placed your security in and everything that, that you used to identify yourself as a person of meaning, who's going to own that now? Because you aren't here. I can imagine that when Jesus is talking to this brother that perhaps the other brother is in earshot. And I can imagine both of them just not knowing what to say. Sometimes uh, we make our way through life and we make all of the best plans and, we're, and especially this time of year, we are concerned with what's around the tree and did we get everything on the list and was everything kind of even 
right? Did I give as much as I got with my family members so that nobody kind of has hard feelings about what's spent? Um, maybe uh, you're picking up extra shifts right now. Maybe you're, you're selling some things that you don't need anymore in order to get the extra to buy what you think is needed that you have been coveting or that somebody else in your family has been chasing after. And to a point, that's all totally fine. But here is the question. Where is your heart? Right? I mean, you could go to the store, you can find the deals, you can buy presents guilt-free, but where is your heart? You can rush around and make all of the best Christmas preparations so that your year hosting the Christmas party is the best one ever that the family has ever seen. And that's totally fine. But where is your heart? To put it another way, where does your soul find its rest? Where do you find your contentment? Is it in the the stuff that's in the boxes under the tree? Is it in the fact that uh, you're doing better than the people next to you? So you can kind of show off a little bit with the gifts that you buy them so that you can get back at them for maybe not returning the favor quite as much? Is it in the fact that that nothing is out of range or reach for you. Where does your soul find its rest? Where is your heart? Where are you content? The problem with materialism is it's not that we shouldn't buy Christmas gifts, and it's not that we shouldn't want things. Those are all okay, but... It is so easy to get our minds and our eyes looking over there and our minds chasing after those things so that it consumes our heart and our actions and finally consumes our soul to the point where we are more concerned with what's in the boxes under the tree than we are with the baby in the manger. That's the danger. You see, the boxes can be full and the tree can be almost hidden by the presence and the meal can be totally awesome because Jesus is in the manger. So don't relax, eat, drink, and be merry simply because you have enough and you can look around and you can say, I don't need anything else and I don't need anybody else. But instead, start first at the manger and see the baby there. He is there for you. So that your eyes would be focused on him and your mind and your thoughts would be captured by him and your heart would be his and your soul would be secure. So that because Jesus is in the manger, you absolutely should relax and eat and drink and be merry because he is here for you. Dear friends, maybe over these next uh, few weeks as we make our way toward the manger... Uh, maybe we just need a heart reset. Right? Maybe, maybe we need to um, just take a step back from all the Christmas lists and all the shopping lists and, and everything else and just remember first, at the top of the list, I have Jesus in the manger. And then start with what else, what else can I do what else can I give? What else can I receive to glorify him? I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, um, we thank you for your honesty, for you are sometimes unhappy with us. Uh, you express that here in this parable as you address these two brothers, as you um, address their hearts. Lord, we ask you that you you would address us the same way, that we would hear you speak honestly to us as you remind us where our focus ought to be, that our eyes should be fixed on you, that our thoughts should be captured by you, that our hearts should be yours and our souls should rest in you, for you are our peace and our identity and our security and our meaning. So dear Jesus, I pray that 
that for all of us who are gathered together uh, worshiping in this moment, that your spirit would work in our hearts to reset us so that materialism and material things wouldn't consume us and tear us away from you, but that instead we would glorify you uh, with our contentment, that we would glorify you by sharing our riches, that we would glorify you as we celebrate with family and friends through exchanging of gifts. Lord, may all that we do and say point to you, for you are here for us. We pray all of this in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship as we sing together. Still your love, it is so intimate. 
Because Jesus is concerned with our hearts and he is concerned with our souls, he doesn't just leave us to ourselves, but he teaches us how to do very, very important things like trust in him. He teaches us, in fact, how to pray. And so uh, we're going to pray now uh, what in the church is called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, If this is a prayer that you've had memorized since you were a little bitty kid, um, that's how I grew up, uh, awesome. We're going to pray that together. It'll feel really great to you. Um, If this is a brand new prayer to you and you have never heard these words before, know that this is how Jesus commands us to pattern our life of prayer where we place place our trust in him um, for our daily bread, and we seek his glory and his will to be uh, apparent in our own lives. And so I invite you, uh, whether you're reading the words on the screen or whether you're bowing your heads and closing your eyes, to join me together as we speak the words of the Lord's Prayer. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One of the other ways that our God teaches us how to trust him is by um, commanding this thing called giving. In the church, we call it an offering, or sometimes we call it a tithe, where we would give a portion of our income to support the ministry of a church. And so uh, we have that opportunity now. Uh, There are a few ways that you can give to this ministry here. You can simply uh, send a check to our address. You can find that on our website at www.hcl.org. While you're there, if it's more convenient for you, you can also um, give online that way as well. And we thank you so much for your support, and we rejoice together in the fact that God is using us as partners uh, to see the kingdom of Jesus come into our midst because we are trusting him uh, with these dollars and these cents. As we give our offering and as we pray about that right now, um, we have the opportunity to continue our worship as we sing. Your light can't 
flows like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of His wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how your affections are for me oh how he loves us all oh how he loves us how he loves us It's been such a joy uh, to be together in worship today. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is um, November the 28th, which already happened. We've started uh, Hope Tree Tags. And this is a, it's a project that our church does every year here at Hales Corners Lutheran where we 
um, collect gifts as congregation members for children in need. Specifically, this year we're partnering with children uh, whose families are in the House of Corrections. So if they have a parent in the House of Corrections in Franklin, uh, we partner with those uh, guys and the chaplain there to make that happen. And also uh, those families who are served by our Ebenezer Food Pantry, um, those families as well, their kids are receiving gifts through this. This is actually our biggest year yet. Um, so um, as of the time of this recording, there are like 300 tags left. That's about half. And so uh, you can um, come and pick up a tag at church if you're able to do that uh, during the regular business hours during the week or uh, during worship times on the weekend. Um, if you do pick up a tag, we need your gift back here by December the 13th. Um, if you are unable to do any of those things, if you go uh, to the church's website or if you find us on Facebook and you find our post about the Hope Tree, you'll see a link there where you can donate. Uh, we're suggesting $25 sponsors a gift. So if you're able to do that and give that way, thank you so much for that. Um, we also have a Light of the World Walk in place of our, our big Journey to the Manger event that we would have had indoors. Obviously, we can't do that indoors this year uh, due to COVID. So um, Friday and Saturday, the 11th and 12th of December from 4.30 to 8.30 p.m., uh, we have an outdoor event. Uh, masks are going to be required. There will be distancing in place. It's free, but we do require some registration so that um, we know how many are coming and how many to prepare for. Um, but come on this outdoor, uh, well-lit walk to the manger, um, the 11th and 12th. And then we have a holiday worship schedule. Um, Christmas is just a couple of weeks away. And so um, Christmas Eve services in the sanctuary, those take place at 11, 2, 4, 6, and 10 p.m. Christmas Eve services in the chapel space here at 9 and at 7.30. And then Christmas Day, uh, we will have uh, an in-person only service with communion at 9.15 in the sanctuary. And the same on New Year's Eve, there will be a 6.30 service that, uh, that evening uh, with communion only in person. There won't be online options for those. Um, there is also, uh, if you remember the tradition here at church, we have a uh, festival choir every year. And uh, we aren't able to do that this year. But we have last year's that was professionally recorded out on the website. It'll be online only at hcl.org all the way from December the 12th through January the 6th. So uh, if that's part of your family heritage, or maybe you just want something different this year that'll get you uh, kind of into the spirit of walking to the manger, go ahead and check that out there. Um, the last announcement I wanted to share with you is about live streaming. So we are in the process for the last few months of working up to live streaming our worship services. You may have noticed uh, that if you've been worshiping with us uh, online for the last period of time that uh, last week and this week looked a little different and maybe felt a little different. That's because we are practicing for the live stream by recording these services using all the same equipment. So uh, camera angles are going to look different. Uh, lyrics are going to maybe look a little bit different and it'll maybe feel a little bit different too. Um, so thank you for your patience. Uh, that will happen. Um, our goal date is December the 20th at the 915 service. And so the difference that that's going to mean for you as an online worshiper is that instead of being able to get a pre-recorded service Friday or Saturday or whenever you felt like it before, now obviously you can't get it until it's out there. So that'll start at 915 on December the 20th is our goal. And then the service will immediately be available afterwards as a recording uh, throughout that week um, so that you can have that at a convenient time for you if 915 doesn't work. With that all said, um, let me send you away with a blessing from the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week in the Lord.